despite historically this being one of my lowest viewed videos, it's actually one of my favorites to do annually. And it's taking a look at the official Game Award nominees, logging in and voting with all of you and talking about it, which is always a ton of fun. Um, I did record this about a week ago, but since I'm not here this week, I went ahead and put it in the can and now it's being released today. So hopefully you've had a chance to look at the nominees and maybe you voted for yourself and you can see how I did compared to you and we'll see what happens. So I am connected. I'm going to hit continue and here we are. The nominees vote now to see what happens. The winners will be announced live on December 7th. Just to let you guys know, I'm not going to be doing any like co-streaming or any of that stuff, but I will do a follow-up video shortly thereafter to talk about my thoughts on the show and some of the hopefully cool announcements that come out during the Game Awards. So, Game of the Year. This is, oh my God, 31 categories. All right, let's get going, boys. <laughs> this is uh, Game of the Year. Uh, none of these particularly surprise me in terms of what the Game of the Year would be. Interesting, you have a lot of sequels. This is why I think Mario Brothers Wonder is actually going to win because it's not a sequel. And I think that's what makes it stand apart from everything else. Not to say that sequels can't be Game of the Year, but I think that's why Mario Brothers Wonder is going to win. For me, without a doubt, I've said this from the moment I played it to the time of this recording, Tears of the Kingdom is without a doubt the best game that's come out this year. And while it is a sequel, it has expanded on the original formula in so many ways. It is a fascinating experience. So that's what I'm going to be voting for. And I hope they win. And I hope they announce the Switch 2 so that I can... Oh, this is interesting. You can share your card with each of your nominees. I'm good. Um, I hope that Switch 2 comes out and that game can be run at 60 frames a second so I could beat it. Best Game Direction, which is Creative Vision and Innovation Design. Based on everything I've seen, and I haven't played through all these games, I would argue that Baldur's Gate by far is the most innovation in game direction and design. The amount of people I hear talk about Baldur's Gate and the way they talk about Baldur's Gate really seems to me like they nailed an RPG in a world where RPGs don't really exist right now. And I would be shocked if it did not win that category. Moving on to the loading screen. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and development in a game. Hmm. A lot of these I haven't played, so this is going to be a tricky one. Um, I can tell you that I think it's going to be Alan Wake 2. The reason why is the first Alan Wake was so, so good. I know they released some of those kind of dopey DLCs with Mr. Shitch or whatever his name was. And uh, American, I think it was American Wasteland is what it was called. Or is that the Tony Hawk's game? But I feel like while an RPG is good, it's hard to get an outstanding story because every character you play and every experience will be slightly different. Cyberpunk has definitely been overhyped for a very, very long time. Um, could be Spider-Man 2. Brent was really hyped up on Spider-Man 2, but I'm going to go and vote for Alan Wake. And this is just purely on my thoughts of playing the first. Again, I haven't even played this game, so maybe I'm not even the best to vote for it. Uh, art direction, without a doubt, Lies of P. Um, I did a long review about that game. I loved the Bella Apoke era. I loved the villains in this game and the puppetry and the ambience of this universe. And while Hi-Fi Rush is fun because it's very cartoony and obviously Mario's, Mario Wonder and really the Nintendo games are always going to have that aura of Nintendo-ness. Lies of P was so original and unique and it really caught a lot of us, myself included, you know, by surprise and how good it was. Best score in music. Um, I See, I know a lot of people are probably going to think uh, Hi-Fi Rush should win because it is a music-based game. To me, the music was very generic and repetitive. Obviously, it had to be repetitive because you were hitting buttons in combination with the music to uh, do an amplified attack and everything. But uh, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is so amazing. Um, I actually did a video on that sound design as well. I talked about how sound design in that game really changed everything. The part when you get the Master Sword 
and the dragon's flying off and he roars and you hear that music chime in. Um, it gives me goosebumps. So I would be shocked if this game does not win sound design. Best audio design. Well, I really wish Tears of the Kingdom was on here again, but um, I did play Dead Space and I was impressed, but I was even more impressed by the Resident Evil 3 remake I just recently played, and I have no reason to believe that Resident Evil 4 wouldn't actually be just as good. Capcom has absolutely nailed some of the sound design over the years. Now, best performance is definitely, I think, difficult to vote on because it, I mean, everything in here is a celebrity contest, but a lot of people are going to remember the performance based on if they enjoyed the game. So for example, if you didn't like Final Fantasy 16, there's no way that Ben Starr would win. He wouldn't win because you would say, oh, the performance wasn't great. And he has no control over what the script is, by the way. He's just kind of locked into it. Um, I can tell you based on what I remember from Spider-Man 1, Yuri Lowenthal's Spider-Man was insanely good. Um, I thought it was actually better than the movies. So he's going to get my vote. How about that, Yuri? There you go. Uh, moving on to innovation and accessibility. I'm glad this category exists. Um, there has been so much done over the last few years on making it easier and more accessible to play games. Um, Resident Evil 3, for example, every time you die, it's like, hey, do you want a gun with infinite ammo? Or hey, do you want the enemies to not hit you as hard? And I like that. Um, and out of all these games that I played... The accessibility, I feel like Hi-Fi Rush, especially since it was a rhythm game and it made it accessible for you to enjoy the story and enjoy the gameplay narrative of it, gets my vote. I, it's funny to think that a rhythm game kind of plays itself, but realistically, that worked so well. That was such a unique innovation at the time. Games for Impact is always these kind of weird indie games. Um, I totally even forgot Goodbye Volcano High came out. Um, I, I wish I could honestly, can I skip? <laughs> um, this is a throwaway vote for me. I haven't played these games. I doubt a lot of people have played these games. Um, there's, I'm sure some of them have an emotional resonance. There are other indie games I played this year that I felt maybe could have been better in this category. And even some mainstream games that really make you think about kind of what you did and why you've done what you've done. Um, and I don't see them listed here. So I'm going to go ahead and go vote for this only because I've heard this game named like a bazillion times. But um, I've always thought that category is stupid and it could, could go away. Um, best ongoing really should be, to me, honestly, Modern Warfare. Uh, Modern Warfare, uh, the Modern Warfare multiplayer, Modern Warfare 3 is such an extension of what we saw in Modern Warfare 2. So much more deep customization. I mentioned this before. I will be doing a video on it, um, talking about it as a live service. Um, the fact that the Division 2 continues to keep ongoing and release new content. The fact that Halo Infinite, shockingly, is not on this list for the absolute renaissance of that game going into this new season is mind-blowing um i have a feeling genshin impact is going to win because it's an insanely popular game i don't really feel that cyberpunk would be even considered in a category like this cyberpunk isn't best ongoing cyberpunk is best redemption story in the way that no man's sky was a redemption story but to tell me that Cyberpunk has got some sort of ongoing uh, development and evolution of player experience, no, they just delivered what they promised. So I really hope Cyberpunk doesn't win. Um, I'm going to go ahead and vote for Genshin. And that's only because I played Genshin for a while and I enjoyed it, and I know it continues to evolve over time. Best community sport. Recognize a game for outstanding community... Oh, community support. I thought I said community sport. Uh, God, Destiny 2, absolutely not. After what they did to that. I don't want Bungie to win anything this year. I'm really not happy with what Bungie did. If you're curious about my thoughts on Bungie, uh, go back and watch my video on how I dodged a bullet by almost actually being hired by Bungie and how weird that interview process was and how broken I think their development cycles are. 
which is really readily apparent that somebody from the outside, like me, can look in and see something so bad and then see these mass layoffs. Um, community support, again, I gotta say, I think Halo is really up there. I think Halo and Modern Warfare are probably the most transparent game studios that I could think of. I would even argue Counter-Strike 2 has a lot of community support, but Cyberpunk being best community support? They released a 25 page report on all the patches that they fixed. That's not community support, um, which is odd. I'm gonna go with No Man's Sky. I feel like that's a great redemption story. I was very hard on that game when it came out and I did go back and play it years later and I enjoyed it with my friends. Best indie game, um, for me it's Dredge. I have a feeling Sea of Stars is gonna win. I really enjoy Dredge quite a bit, um, but I don't think it's gonna win. Best debut indie game, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna head go again with Dredge again. Um, very interesting concept. Uh, very fun boat simulator type game that was just different. And I think that's. There's so many other good indie games that came out. That's where I I kind of struggle with like, some of the other ones that I've played like not seeing them. But I mean I don't make the list. I just get to vote on it. Best mobile game. Hmm. I didn't even know Monster Hunter had a mobile game. Honestly. Um, Ever Crisis, I did not like at all. I was not a fan of that, and I really thought I would be. I'm going to go ahead and go with Monster Hunter. Again, some of these are throwaway votes, especially as you get deeper into some of the votes. We're not even halfway. Some of these are um, a little odd. Best VR, uh, definitely Resident Evil Village. I think the horror that went into that game was amazing. I know a lot of people loved it because of the lady, and of course they're going to put her in there because you know everybody loves a giant lady, and it's kind of weird, but... Uh, first person survival horror games done well will absolutely horrify you and I feel like that is absolutely uh, a game that's worthy of that now I haven't played our armor cord 6 yet I want to um, but remnant 2 will get my vote in any category it appears in that game needs so much more love than it's getting and it's aggravating to me that we are you know 15 votes in and that's the first mention of remnant but there we are uh, best, best action adventure Absolutely, Tears of the Kingdom. I would argue a lot of these other games are more action, and I would also argue that the uh, development team who put together, uh, the development team, the, the panel who put together these categories isn't really clear on what an action adventure game is if they're putting a third person shooter in there. Um, you could argue Star Wars Jedi Survivor is some adventure because there is a sense of exploration. Spider-Man 2, absolutely going around exploring the city. But a shooter is not an adventure game. It's just not. And Tears of the Kingdom is going to win this. And I voted for it because that's the right choice. Best RPG. Um, you heard my love. And interestingly enough, I want to point this out too. The hype that Starfield got releasing which i still haven't played it yet the hype that it got that the only time it's been mentioned so far is in best rpg tells you what a miss that game was whether you loved it or hated it the potential that starfield could have had the fact that we are 17 votes into the game of the year awards and this is the first mention of it you didn't see it in score or graphics or rpg or anything you're seeing, or, you know, RPG, you are seeing it in. Um, story, any of that, that is mind boggling to me. Best RPG, I wouldn't really consider Lies of P an RPG. Um, you're not really making massive choices. I don't, again, I, I think the, fa the, the team who put together the choices maybe don't understand what an RPG is. The fact that Lies of P is in here is a little odd to me. Because you're not... That's like saying every, That's like saying any game... That's like saying Zelda's a role-playing game. Because you're playing the role of Link. That's not really true, is it? The Baldur's Gate is. And it's a good one. Um, I assume these categories are going to start getting a little wonky here. Um, best fighting. Just because of how beautiful the aesthetic was. That's a quick vote for me. I'm sure a lot of people would argue Mortal Kombat, but to me, Mortal Kombat has been very samey. 
and it's gotten a little weird in the plot and it's gotten a little weird in kind of what the tone of that game is. Um, as I feel like that Street Fighter game that came out really changed the way we look at Street Fighter. Best family game. Um, I can speak from experience on this one and tell you Disney's Illusion Island is an absolute blast to play with others. Um, I like party animals a lot as well, but I feel like it's very, it's not very genre breaking when you consider there were so many other games like Gang Beasts, which came out years ago, uh, which did it, I think, pretty well. Super Mario Wonder is fun, but it's definitely more fun enjoyed solo. So I'm going to go with Disney Illusion Island. Playing with your friends and dropping the, or your wife and dropping down the ropes so she can avoid the puzzles is a ton of fun. And it was just a cute aesthetic that we enjoyed playing together. Best simulation and strategy. Uh, I'm torn here between City Skylines 2 and Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Uh, definitely the simulate again... The game award category is a little odd. Um, Advance Wars is not a simulation. And Skylines isn't really a strategy. I get it. They're putting a slash in there. Um, but if you're talking about reading the category, best real-time or turn-based simulation, um, just because I was so hyped on it when it came out, I'm going to go with Advance Wars, and I love Sammy's theme, and it's one of the best themes in, in video game history. Best sports game, I really wish I could skip, honestly. I'm so tired of seeing this category. I'm glad Madden didn't make the cut. Um, sports and racing, again, two very wild genres. They don't really seem to match up together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and vote the Crew Motorfest. I don't think they're going to win. I think Forza is going to win because they got to give Forza something that's always been like the media darling. Um, so I think Forza is going to probably win. The fact that this is of all the games we had this year, again, the fact that I don't see, um, well, I don't know. I guess they're not counting Call of Duty out this year as a multiplayer game. The amount of hours I've put in that with my friends is over 500. And with the <laughs> new zombie stuff, it's even better. But <sighs> I'm going to go Diablo 4. Because it's drop in, drop out. Because it's easy to play with others. Because it's accessible is fun. Baldur's Gate um, is very instance-based. And... You have to be playing with the same people, more like a Dungeons and Dragons style, which is fun. But when you think of the experience of multiplayer, you have your own character, you want to jump in, do a couple dungeons, jump out. Diablo makes the absolute most sense to me by, by a mile, I think, over the other ones. Um, best adaptation. Uh, this is of television. This is interesting category. Uh, the correct answer is, well, is absolutely The Last of Us. Super Mario Brothers movie, while I loved it, if you're talking about faithfully and authentically creating last of us was literally shot for shot. Uh, that category is a little bit misleading. If they said best, maybe you'd get something different, but they didn't. Uh, most anticipated game. I think for most of us is going to be final fantasy seven rebirth. I have said for a while now that final fantasy seven remake is my favorite game of all time, uh, beating shadow of the Colossus. And I stand by that. Creative content through the year. Interestingly enough, once again, Viper Magic does not make the cut. Um, I don't know why. I just, this is a throwaway vote. This is a popularity contest of who those content creators are that's going to do the best to um, fight for their people. Best esports game, absolutely Counter Strike 2. Although, really, the best esports game remains StarCraft, although not a lot of people play it or talk about it. Some of those tournaments that they do are insane, and the casting and the level of skill in those players is just unreal um as far as best esports athlete there have been some dominant halo players this year that continuously are amazing but um i can tell you at least to me faker is a household name and my group of friends we know who that is so i'll get my vote um best team uh it's interesting to see uh, more than one Valorant team. Um, again, not showing a Halo team that's been dominant all year long, uh, winning the Halo Championship Series and the Sentinels. 
uh, a little disappointed. I'm I'm frustrated as you couldn't tell that there's been a lot of Halo snubs this particular go round. Um, I don't know much about these guys to be honest. I'm gonna go ahead and vote these guys. Just throw away vote. I, I don't really care to be honest with you. Uh, best coach again, another throwaway vote. Don't really care. I'm just gonna randomly click one. Um, and I think the last couple of categories, you, you know, not the best. Best esports events. Um, Evo 2023 has been consistently good. And uh, I think that's it, right? Keep going. Is there keep going? Is there more? I've reached the edge. Oh, are we done? Do my votes even count? <laughs> now do it all over for real this time, guys, because those didn't count. Um, there you go. I guess it's done. I guess when you finish the voting, it just kicks you out. So I know this was a long video. Um, I, I will say that in, uh, you know, kind of wrapping up, um, not particularly thrilled with some of these categories. Again, I think this award show remains too bloated. And I think a lot of the games that uh, were not featured here is a disservice to games that have done a lot with their content um, that I'm enjoying and continuing to enjoy. And I think longevity does lay into this in a lot of those live service type games. But the fact that they're putting this on is still amazing. I will be watching. I'll be glued to my television as I'm sure many of you will. And when it's all said and done, we'll come back and chit chat about it. So that wraps up today's video. And thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.